Hello everybody, I'm here chatting with Robin from the YouTube channel, The Real Sir Robin. How's it going, man? Hello everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. So what about you? Pretty good, man. And uh, I know we've been meaning to do this for a while, yeah. but um, yeah, for anyone who isn't familiar with your channel, uh, I'm sure most of the people who watch mine are, but uh, you know, Robin and I have met before here in Melbourne and we've stayed in touch ever since. We've done a couple of little video collaborations and things like that with um, online chats, but I thought I would do one where we can talk about the topic of zines and um, zine making, because Robin has a lot of experience in that field. And I just thought it would be something that- I, I wouldn't yeah. call it a lot. You wouldn't? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would, because I have not no, made not any a lot. zines. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah like, so far uh, I've made two zines. Yeah. You've made, well, technically three. You've got the two uh, extra wide. Yeah. These are both shot on the Hasselblad X-Pan. And yeah. um, number two came out more recently. So I would I would count them as one because it's, it's pretty similar. So okay, sure. <laughs> for, for me, it's, it's basically one. It's mean, yeah, technically it's three years. And there's number. There's the other zine, twenty eight, which I have yes. a copy of as well. And um, I'm a big fan. So I know I've told you that I love the work in these um, zines. And to me, it feels almost more like a book than a than a zine because of the quality of the printing and the contents, um, both in this one yes. and in the expand ones. Maybe for people who are not familiar with zine making at all, uh, yeah. you know, what is the starting point for you, at least with these projects that, you know, gets you, gets the ball rolling mm -hmm. in deciding to print a zine? It depends. I mean, the first one I did, uh, it's the, the first x zine that wasn't, I had no plans to do a zine. Um, it just happened because people asked me, Hey, why don't you do a zine? And, uh, I thought, yeah, maybe I should, because, uh, I had plenty of, uh, of images for a zine for mm -hmm. an expand zine. So I thought maybe I should do it. Um, so yeah, I looked into it. Uh, it took me a while uh, because I had no experience with printing whatsoever, yeah. not at all, no experience with, uh, InDesign or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to look into all of this. So I did it all myself. Okay. Um, yeah, but after I found out about printing, how it does, how, how it works and especially how much it costs because, um, it can be really expensive. Um, and, the uh, Quality can be very different. So, um, you can get really cheap printing. Yeah. Uh, but then it might look, not look that great. And if you put out the zine with your work, you want it to look as good as possible. I mean, at least that's, I want for sure. Just me, maybe. Okay. Well, let's say so, that was your first one with the Hasselblad expand zine, but yes. I'm assuming that maybe with 28, you, because yeah. you already had the experience, you went into maybe shooting that series, maybe with the intention of printing a zine later. Yes, we, exactly. Um, yeah. I went to Egypt and I had this idea, maybe, um, I will just bring one camera, one film, one film stock. Um, because I think, uh, it's better if, uh, it's the content is more consistent. So the colors look similar and mm -hmm. it's not just all over the place, like black and white and color and uh, different film stocks. So that's why I brought only one film stock and yeah. it makes things much easier if you go out on the streets and take photos you don't have to think about what to bring because there's no choice you have only one yeah. one camera one lens and one film stock yeah. so i did that and i thought hey if i come back maybe um if it works out i can make a zine so it was i would say it, it was a gamble and the but it paid off i mean i was really pleased when i got the scans um so i had like thousands of images to go yeah. through uh yeah but i was i was really happy with the results so um Nice. And, um, that brings me to a good point actually. Um, so with this one, you shot it all on Kodak vision 200 T is that right? Yes. Yes. So it was done by Silberzal 35, uh, ECN two processing. Yeah. And, um, yep. what, what stands out to me and I don't know if you remember this, you had a nice little note there for me on, on that copy, but, um, I also noticed a strong, obviously it's all in the same place. So there's a sense of consistency throughout the work. But there's also yes. some yeah, visual yeah. elements and like little motifs that I noticed you kind of um, had throughout the zine, like maybe the reds, like a lot of the images, it seems like you were paying attention to, to little red things throughout it. Or was that just a coincidence, you know, such as that, that kid there and, um, um, you know, little pops of red or was yeah, that I just... Mean, I, I... Yes, it was um, somewhat, I mean, it was intentional. Um, it because I knew that, uh, the reds would look really great. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, if there was something red, something interesting, uh, I'll try to take a photo or maybe, I mean, um, it's not working out if it's just red, there has to be something 
something yeah. that's interesting in some way or form. Uh, so so like yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's really funny that people that I never mentioned that. So, but people realize that when flipping through and they've seen that there's always red. There's yeah. like a couple of things in there. There's red, like all the reds in there, and cats. Yes, yeah, I was going to say. A, in the other, there's yeah. so many cats in there, uh, and sometimes you cannot really see the cat. You have to really look for it, but then yeah. you might you might find it, and uh, so it's 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 really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So little street cats, and I know that's all. The cover yeah. has both those um, motifs on there: the cat and the red color for the yes. the title. Um, yeah. So I'm sure that was a conscious decision with that. Um, yes. But yeah, I think like these little touches really add to the work because I can only imagine, let's say, if you used a different cover or something, it wouldn't have had just quite as much polish. And um, another really good point you mentioned earlier is um, putting some thought into the print quality. Although there's completely nothing wrong yes. with making your first zines, especially on just cheap, even if it's just no, A4 paper, not. you know, oh, that's yes. where we start. But if something you really want to sort of um, put a lot of effort into, what is your advice? And I know you've talked to me a little bit about it before, but when it comes to printing, it is expensive. And you went, mm -hmm. I believe, with offset printing. Yeah. Uh, what is your yes. advice in that regards with printing? Um, I often get questions. People send me emails and saying, hey, I want to bring out a zine. Um, I want to do, I don't know, 100 copies. And they usually go for um, digital printing. Mm -hmm. But the problem is digital printing, usually it's, uh, it doesn't matter how many you order. It's uh, the price per unit, it's, it stays the same. It's not, no, not, it's not a big difference, maybe 10%. You get a little bit dis of, dis of discount. But the thing is, um, with offset printing, it gets much cheaper if you print more. And so how sometimes many uh, it can be cheaper to go. Well, it depends on the printing company. But sometimes it, uh, if you go for... Um, maybe digital printing, it might cost you uh, for 100 copies, it might cost you the same as uh, 500 copies uh, if you do offset printing. Right. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Um, so I think you should, if you want to do a zine, you should look into this. I mean, even if there, if you don't have, if there's not enough people to uh, buy your zine or, and you don't have no use for 500 copies, maybe, I don't know, over time, it might change. So, um, yeah. if, and if you, if you have the room to, uh, to store the copies, um, there's nothing wrong about that. So okay. the quality is better. So the so one of the keys is, I suppose, you need to know that you're going to sell a certain amount and uh, and that it'll be worthwhile yes. taking that risk. Yeah. Yep. And another. I mean, question... there's nothing wrong about digital printing. Yes, because there's sometimes uh, some uh, companies the digital. For instance, if I um, because I also shoot weddings for yep. a living, basically, and uh, they want a book usually. Mm -hmm. And it's digital printing also. I mean, because they won't order 500 copies, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, I mean, the quality is really good. It's nothing wrong about that. But yeah. So Places there like are, but it's really expensive. I mean, yeah, but yes, exactly. But a copy, uh, if you order a copy there, it's like, I don't know, it's like 30, 40 euros if you do a zine there, like a, a proper zine. Uh, and that's a little pricey. So. Yeah, the quality is good, but it's really pricey. But if you only do a, a small run of like five to ten, then maybe it might be worth it. Uh, and if you know the people that are willing to spend uh, a little bit of cash and you get them your money back, then it's fine. But if you have an audience or you or you have a really good zine, um, maybe somebody can promote it for you, and then uh, it might sell. Even if you don't have the audience, it might sell as well, pretty good. So yeah, and there's also I think there's also like uh, some online dealers that only have zines I, um i heard about that yeah right interesting so, but with the uh print place you use for example um yeah did you have the ability to just walk in and check on things those were all shipped to you uh so the the first thing i did um i ordered online so the printing company was pretty far away so there was no way to go just go there and uh see the process and i think they they don't even offer um so for the 28, I uh, picked a different company as close by. Uh, mm -hmm. It was more expensive, not that much. But at the same time, they offered me to uh, to go there and see it when it's printed. Yeah. So then because they said, hey, uh, you can you can see it. And uh, if, if you need to change some colors, we can do that. That's so good. I thought, hey, that's perfect. Because the first one, I, I can still remember when it arrived here. I mean, I don't know, I, like... <laughs> My heart rate was like pretty high up there because yeah. uh, when I opened it, I was like, oh my God, hope, hopefully it's not messed up. I mean, if you have like 500 copies of a zine there for a lot of money, and then you flip through the pages and see something went wrong then. But 
fortunately it was good yeah. um so there's no so, proof yeah, copy I, like initial you can, yeah you can do it but yeah. you you can get one uh but um it's not representative it's not representing the uh the final quality because it's not i think it's not offset printing right uh, it's like digital but you can see if if everything works out in terms of pages i see um but i i didn't do that i uh i thought nah yolo i will just uh because it was uh, <laughs> a couple hundred more i thought nah nah i won't do that so yeah <laughs> in the end it turned out uh to be good so but, well you live I mean, life on yeah. the edge obviously um <laughs> cool and another little topic i think people will be interested in is uh once you've shot the project the series and the next step obviously is editing the work and what i mean is editing yes. more in a traditional sense like selecting the shots and then sequencing them yes and then designing it in um software what's your process like do you print yeah. six by fours initially what do you do for that um First, I started to do this in Lightroom, mm -hmm. um, but then I realized, oh, no, it's not fun. It's not, I don't know, it's, so I printed all the photos. I had a selection of photos, like, uh, I think around about 100 images. Yeah. Um, so I printed them and I put them on the floor and then I started sequencing and I also asked a friend to help me. Mm -hmm. um, he's not a photographer, but just to get a different perspective. And yeah. I think that helped tremendously. Um, For sure. Uh, I would definitely recommend to ask other people about their opinion. Doesn't mean maybe it will give you some some uh, new ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I have to say that was a fun experience uh, sequencing because it was pretty much the first time I've ever done this. I mean, I've done I've, I've did the same. Oh, I did the same with the uh, first scene, but because it was not a a project, it was not it was not it was not really consistent. Yeah. So it was different because um, for this one, I had to think it through from the start to the end. Like, yeah, yeah sure. I mean, that took me, uh, I, I would say maybe two weeks. So fair enough. Well, that's not bad. I mean, I a hundred percent agree um, in that sense is, you know, selecting them in Lightroom, at least culling down to a certain number, maybe it was a hundred and then you yeah. need to get it down to yeah. to 30 or whatever. Um, I'm doing the same with the, the zine I'm working on. Just I had them all on the floor, sequencing that way. And uh, getting opinions is also handy, I think. So see this here? Yeah. This is pretty uh, much yeah. what I did. I, black uh, and white? These are, but these, yeah, this is black and white, but this is a different project. Um, oh, that's that the I'm other doing. project. Yeah. Top secret. Yeah, that's a project. Um, yeah. Yes, that's a secret <laughs> project. Yeah. Uh, it's not finished yet. Uh, hopefully I can, I will be able to finish it, but, um, yeah, yeah the current situation is a little bit d difficult. Correct. That's right. <laughs> I already have enough images, uh, because I want to make, I don't know if I want to make a zine because this, you know, the 28 project, um, it was shot in like, I don't know, a little over a week, mm -hmm. but this project was, uh, took me weeks to shoot it. So, and I think, uh, it's much, it's even much better than 28. And I've really, the images I already got are really good. Um, nice. So, yeah, I think it would be, uh, let me put it, yeah, it would be like a, a waste almost <laughs> to put it into a zine because the quality is really good and I've done so many zines. Maybe I should uh, aim for a book or something. Go straight, go but for the book. not yeah. sure. Cool. Yes, but not sure about that well, yet. That, that'll be amazing but, once you uh, actually finish it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is... Uh, I guess it's really hard to tell when uh, a project is finished because you're always probably thinking or, or maybe second guessing yourself. Maybe I need more images, more. Maybe I should uh, shoot more and more. Uh, so I think it's hard yeah. to uh, uh, get to an end. I, I mean, maybe because I cannot finish it because I can't go there anymore, or maybe for the foreseeable future, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Then um, it's pretty much finished, but I already got enough. So. So I guess it's on hold. So that's fine. It's on hold, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's amazing that, you know, some work like 28, you were able to pull off in just a week, uh, you know, considering the quality of that content and what you managed to get there, whereas some projects can span years. Um, and I know what that's yes. like, just shooting little drips and drabs until you finally have enough or you feel like, okay, I can't get any more. This will have to do. Um, yeah. Once you've gone through that sequencing and editing process, do you just uh, chuck it into mm -hmm. something like Adobe InDesign? to lay it out yes yeah cool yes exactly yeah okay well uh, that that pretty much you know just covers some of those little basic points i thought i'd ask about the zine mm -hmm. making process 
So uh, thanks for that. But I thought maybe just before we end things, I'll just sort of, um, cause we only got to talk for a little bit before hitting record. And, uh, I just want to talk about what you've been up to lately because 2020 has been a crazy year. And I know your travel plans were halted when you were yeah. in Bangkok and you had to go home and more recently, it looks like you've been traveling again. I mean, I was not traveling all the time, so I, yeah. I was at, I mean, I was maybe traveling for like three, four weeks in total. Yeah. Well, that's all right. I mean, considering here we were locked down for, <laughs> we still not allowed to yeah, travel no. overseas. It's, it's pretty good to see. Yeah. Um, because what I feel, and I know probably a lot of viewers do with videos like yours and others is that they get to live vicariously through your travels or little, uh, trips or whatever yeah. it might be, which is it's great to see. Um, has it been good to be able to like, at least do these little trips somewhere nearby? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, there's some, there's a lot of, uh, places in Europe I've never been to, or maybe just briefly. So, uh, there's a lot of cover here. Um, but people that know my channel, they know that I'm usually, <laughs> I'm traveling all over the place, like in Asia or yeah. whatever. Um, and I was thinking to, uh, maybe to go some other places. Um, uh, yeah. Maybe in the winter, I don't know uh, if it will be possible, but it seems like right now Mexico might be a good option. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully when the um, borders allow it, you can um, make a trip back down to Australia, which I know you were planning to do back in March yes. before this all happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. It's really unfortunate. I mean, I had so many plans, but nothing worked out so yeah. far. So I'm really hesitant to make any plans because what's the point of making plans and then yeah. it does not work out. So um, it's a bit like that. All right. And, uh, what, any other exciting projects? What's next for the channel before we, um, sum things up? Um, uh, projects. I mean, there's no, like I said, I don't have any plans for projects. I'm just yeah. focusing on, uh, making videos. Um, I filmed a bunch of videos, so there will be until the end of the year, there will be a lot of videos coming on uh, like two, uh, probably two week, two a week, which is oh. good. And all street photography. Like nice. I don't, I want to focus on only on that. Uh, I, there's a lot of um, companies that they approach me and uh, ask me if I want to do a review and stuff. But right now, I'm really I don't want to really do that. All right. Well, um, it's it's cool to see that you've got a lot of videos lined up to last you for the end of the year. I, sh I wish I could say the same thing for myself. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, anyone who isn't familiar with your channel, I hope that they uh, definitely go and check your stuff out. I'm always um, you know watching and looking forward to the next video. And uh, yeah, just a reminder, people who want to check out your zine. Highly recommend both the 28 and the X panzines if you want to look at some quality street photography work all taken on film. And yeah, thanks for being on, Robin. Anything else um, you wanted to, to leave there before? Any links or recommendations for the audience? Uh, not really. I mean, thank you for having me. Um, and hopefully we can film a, a video together when I'm yeah. uh, in Australia at some point. Um, hopefully, because or maybe. I still can remember like <laughs> the road trip we had. The road trip we had that was really good fun. I mean, it that was, was good. really spontaneous and not planned at all, but uh, it was really funny. So yeah, yeah. Let's, let's hope, hope so. we can uh, catch up and do another video. Some I don't know, maybe another road trip or some street photography who in knows? Melbourne or who knows. Yeah, looking forward to it, man. Well, thanks for having a chat, and uh, thanks everyone for watching. Yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. bye. See you guys. Auf Wiedersehen.